find the pictures from last night. I had um, I drank a whole pitcher of beer. Oh, nice, man. It was a bigger pitcher than I thought it would be, but That's I had committed when I bought it. So um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, one second, buddy. There you go, bro. God damn. So that's why my head hurts right now, and I'm a little bit out of it, everybody. All right, we're still waiting for it to pull up here, man. Really? What's up, Corey? It's not showing? At least, hold on. Maybe I need to go look at the YouTube channel. Oh, <laughs> yep, there it is. Yep, I see All it right. now. Hell yeah, that dude. Was, that was it, bro. You got the Dosakis? Is that what you got? No, that was just the mug. I got this thing called um, Crawford Bach, a local Texas Ooh, beer. Nice, nice yeah. dude. Yeah. How's, how's things going there in Austin? Oh, it's hot, man. Every day is like one, 102, 103. Nice, dude. Nice, nice, nice. So, what's up, Corey and Vic and Robert and Shane? How you guys doing, man? And you're right, up, Shane. Man. Thunder the fuck up. Man. What's up, little Mark? That's right. I hear you. Drinking. Getting it done. You want to say hi? <sighs> Ooh. Okay, say hi, Shane. Hi. Hi, little Mark. Hi, Robert. Hi, Vic. Hi, Corey. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Lick it, Mark. Ah, ah. There you go. There you go. Show him the tongue. Say hi. <laughs> Say thunder. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> what time is the game? It's like 530 Central Time, right? Yeah, it's 630 uh, East Coast Time. So I'm going to pull up real fast just to make sure I'm saying it right. And here we go. Oh, that's, dang it. Up, Summer Smith's League stuff. is different. 6.30 Eastern, so 5.30 your time. Smith's up. What's up, man? What's up? All right, so we wanted to jump on. Normally, we don't do game days, but we we started a little bit of controversy talking shit on Vic. Uh, yeah, I'm Vic. Victor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not you, Vic. Victor, Victor. So, I, I, I kind of, I, I kind of feel bad because I went full blast on this guy that was like, "Know your shit before you say something," you know. Yeah, I admitted I didn't watch the game. That was definitely made me a target. Well, but, but here's the thing that I want to make sure that I, I, I throw out here is that, um, this guy really contradicted himself by saying that women, <laughs> Victor, is a pass first big man. All right, like. I get it. You can say that, but he's not. All right. If you look at the way that he gets the ball on the perimeter, he's doing one thing, looking to score. He might pass the ball around the horn, but the thing about it is, is that a passing big man, right, Mark, finds the open guy in the post, well, in the corner. And that's the thing is that it's not necessarily, Victor's not finding necessarily the open guy, but what he's doing is he's keeping the ball in, in the rhythm of the game. So it doesn't necessarily look bad. So, like, um, the most effective pass in the NBA is the skip pass. So somebody who's a, a pass first big man needs to be able to read the double, right? And send the, the pass to the open player for an open shot. Like I'm not saying around the horn doesn't work and it does sometimes just getting the ball from side to side is good, but to really carve up defenses, you see Luca, you see Shea, you see Giddy, sure. um, you see LeBron. They have the ability to send that cross court, pass to a shooter's pocket and so i'm not saying that victor can't be that um, i mean i just haven't seen any like indication that that's where he is right now yeah i, I just again it, it could be part of his game but the reality is is that victor's going to be the best with a really really good point guard you know and a brute force as a power forward down in the post that could play center as well so to me, I, I, I understand what people are saying, and I get the fact that, you know, San Antonio people are all up in arms about their new player. But, like, if San Antonio didn't have Victor, right, and we went through just the how you set a screen properly, you know, right, um, and keeping your base properly, and they saw what we saw with the way his knee went whoop, a little bit, okay? And I don't think it's a coincidence that Victor's not playing. Again, in, in the summer league, he's been shut down because I think that scared a lot of people because that movement on the knee is something that is, is scary for anybody that size. 
So I think they saw that and coach pop was like, get him out. Let's go ahead and get back to the lab with him and keep getting those legs under control because this is going to be bad. I, I, I really do believe that. And I think that's one of the, the, the reasons why we're looking at and saying this is because we watched what happened with Chet last year, you know, with that Liz Frank inc- injury, those things happen in freak situations. And that knee collide that, it, that happened the other night, man, that could have been one of those knee, like crazy freaking situations. You watch it slow enough and you watch his knee kind of like hyperextend just a little bit. You start wondering how many more of those he can get before, you know, or how big of a guy that goes through that screen, a guy like LeBron goes through that screen, you know, like it's not good. It's not good. It's not a good feeling. So with um, right now with Chet and Victor, like they're going to be compared to each other a lot. Like some of the yeah, best dude. evaluations we had was 18 and under Team USA watching Chet and Victor play against each other. And then, you know, comes the draft, right? And Chet intentionally decides he doesn't want to go number one, right? And he really tips the scale to ensure that he doesn't accidentally go number one, um, <laughs> right? And, and by, by leaving by leaving Orlando early. Not getting by, up medical records. Yeah. Not, I mean, he made, he made sure Orlando got the, you know, fifth degree is if you draft me, you're not going to get any information on me until I'm here. Right. So, you know, you see with Victor – He's obviously the number one pick, and Chet should have been the number one pick. We see him as the number one pick, and he's going to have to prove that over some time. But what I wonder, though, is like, you know, a lot of people, when they evaluate players, they'll look at it and they'll say, like, oh, this player on paper and this player on paper. Yeah. And even though they're not from the same draft, you know, you are talking about the number one and number two picks from from different drafts who are also going to be rookies at the same time. Brandon Miller is the second number two pick in the draft. But where I look at and I say, like, they're basically they're very similar in um, stature and and body type is very similar too. Um, there are a lot of people who think that those couple inches Victor has over Chet seven three versus seven one is you know a significant difference. But for me, what I come back to, and I know this is probably going to piss off that that Spurs fan who was listening earlier, but um, I would just say like you know Greg Oden was a couple inches taller than Kevin Durant. And he went number one. Now, I know that they're not the same draft, but I'm just saying, like, Victor being two inches taller than Chet doesn't actually mean he's going to be a better basketball player. But people seem to think that it does. Again, I mean, it's it's the difference between a dog and a wolf. I mean, Jerry West says it the best, bro. I mean, he said it before. He'll say it again. And he's going to continue saying it. Is there's the dogs in the NBA, and they're very successful. But then there's the wolf that devours everybody. And those are the people that stand out above everybody else. And that's what I'm betting on that Chet is. That's what I'm betting on that J-Dub is. That's what I'm betting on that Kaysen is. That's what I'm betting on that Josh Giddy is. That's what I'm betting on that what? That's right. Shay, J-Dub, our entire starting lineup. We have a bunch of wolves on this team. And I think it needs to be embraced. And anybody that says, oh, yeah, well, we would rather this or that. But Victor, in order to have the right team around him so that he can win in championships, he needs good guards. And right now, that's one thing that it's struggling to have in, in um, San Antonio. So how many years do they need to suck to get enough guards for him or to put around him? Because if they don't be patient, you're sitting with a situation like Luca. You know, Luca's good enough to get his team into the second round, but what, what team is around him besides him? I mean, Kyrie's good. But there's no other team. When you're playing against one or two guys versus a whole team of 15 guys being run in and run out, different lineups. I mean, again, 75 different lineups so you can go at any different different time with these different guys. Like, you're not sitting – I mean, I'm telling you, we have the analytics guys that are sitting there looking at every single possible lineup that would be good against this team, against that team. And that's what Coach D does. His sporadic, sometimes crazy – um, um, substitutions, it's all part of the plan. It's all part of, hey, if we put this player, then this player, this player, this is the matchup that we're going to expose. That's what's no next level about this, is that sometimes you get the coaches that are all about the eye, eye test. You know, like, oh, well, you got this player, this player, we're going to match them up like that. That's not what Coach D and his staff are doing. And that's why I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm trying to understand in the concept of, like Coach Popovich has that old school mentality and he's going to be good for Victor, right? And he's going to teach him a lot of things. 
But getting everything else around Victor to be successful like the Oklahoma City Thunder have done for Chet is going to be a five-year project. You know, Oklahoma City Thunder pushed fast forward on their project because we went out and got Shea and we went out and got J-Dub and, you know, all these other guys, Josh Giddy. San Antonio Spurs aren't there yet. So, and I get it. Victor saying, uh, Vic is saying that you have to wait until this, um, the NBA seasons to start before you can compare. You're absolutely right. But we just my point, can't help ourselves. We're sorry. But my point about this whole thing is, is that, like, how are you going to compare a player that is like Victor that's probably going to average 20 something points his rookie year, you know, 10, 12 boards to a guy that's going to and, 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 and ha- be a lottery selection next year to a guy that's going to be the second or third best player on his team in a Western conference showdown of the top five, six teams there. Like, how are you going to compare that? It, it, like you can go back and say, you know, people are saying, um, well, if you compare this player, to that player, like compare Luca to, um, Allen Iverson or compare, um, uh, Dirk Nowinski to blank. And it's like, listen, I compare those players, yes, but one of the reasons that these players are so successful is they have championships. You know, think about it. Charles never won a championship, and every single time Charles and Shaq are together, Shaq lets him know he has no championships. You know? Like, that's a fact in the matter, is championships matter over MVPs. Championship matters over Western Conference final gigs. It matters over everything else. You know, like, if... Carl Malone or John Stockton have won a championship in, you know, Utah, we'd be all talking about them in a different situation. But for five years, they couldn't get it done. <sighs> yeah. What's up, Road Dog? What's up, Riddles? Um, yes, we are now child friendly. Although, um, don't tell are anybody. We? Wait, what? Just because I had my my son. Oh, on the oh, show. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, no, not on, <laughs> not on YouTube, man. No, it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. I want to give a quick shout out to everybody who's been, you know, giving us a lot of support recently. Um, the members um, and anybody who just, you know, jumps in the chat. We love you too. But there's a bunch of people who have started supporting us and we want to give them a <laughs> shout out. Real we quick. love you guys. We love you. Um, Mark Howitt, Ryan Sheffield, El Sombra, Niner by Nature, Unk, John, Blake, K. Bizzle, Smitsta. What's up, man? Cameron, Wayne, Bluegill, Golden Soldier, Ben Mack, and Calium, our newest Thunder family member. Thanks Damn. for joining us. We love you guys, and we're pumped up about what we're doing here. Dave and I were just talking a second ago, right before yes. we got on, about working out all the details for the call-in show. We are it's doing coming. a call-in show, guys. It's coming soon. We're very, figuring out very. how to use the toys, the tools that we have at our disposal. Just we are cool. just a couple of hillbillies. <laughs> on the internet though <laughs> no we're doing this really really fast like i i told mark i was like there's so many things that we can do with this but really it's it's about connecting to the guys um out there that that connect to us so and girls like and, and girls we've had everybody. a few of you girls through the um through the years i say a few um but i feel like i feel like it's it's amazing to be able to have um what's up Aaron? some of you guys Durant, out there so oklahoma Aaron, down, so. what's up man that's awesome. Durant. Yes, yes. So, the Rockets tonight. That's right, Vic. 630 what do you, what do you, I, Central. Listen, man. Anytime we play the Rockets, I want to smash them. I just do. I don't even care if it's Summer League. I just want to, to smash them. So, yeah. I mean, let's it, talk man. about the Rockets a little bit. I've noticed that they have a... Um, a summer league team that they're pretty excited about. Jabari Smith has been playing well. I saw Tari Eason was playing well. Here's the thing. I don't watch these games. I only watch the Thunder. So I hear things. I see like little highlights. And mm. um, it seems like at this point, the Rockets are pretty pumped up about the the season because of what's happening at summer league. Yeah, I, I, they should be though, because look at the, the signees that they have um, off season, uh, they're still not done. I don't think I don't think they're close to being done. I think they're still trying to make it a trade um, for another big name player, um, and that's cool, man. I'm I'm all for it because the more money they spend and the more they they um, take out the chances to sign some of these young players they have. So um, I'm cool with uh, them doing this like half ass rebuild. Um, I, I do expect them to make a splash 
in the beginning part of the season. They have some good pieces. Uh, but again, we're talking about the Rockets. So for them to go and, and make the playoffs this year, it would be a true miracle and masterpiece of the coaching staff and everything else like that, which again is possible that could happen. But we get their pick if it's not, you know, four, three, two, or one. So Vic, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you when you come back. He says he's got a chat mixtape. Ooh, yes, dude. I'm on yeah. there. You know it. Guys, That's check out for, guys. check out Vic, all things basketball podcast. He is amazing. He does some really good work. Great interviews. He knows what he's talking about. So check him out, guys. For sure, man. We always enjoy them and pumped up about anybody who takes the time to create, you know, a special um video or you know anything for the thunder so we always appreciate that we love sharing it we love talking about it uh, this is you know this is an exciting time because right now it's the summer league but when you look at the schedule it, it ends abruptly and then the dog days end start mm. enter because really mm. the season ends the playoffs are still going on so there's something to watch the draft hits then the season you know starts up again with the summer league almost immediately after the draft so there's really no lull from the end of the season to now the lull ends the starts really after the summer league before training camp i think there's like 60 well, we, we've got 70 some days international hoops too to watch oh yeah we do we do yeah. you know what? we got the fiba hoops yep so uh, anybody Which know I when those throw start? wayne one of our supporters man i really love wayne um he had this really uh um great logic that i hadn't really thought about he said, what do you think about the maturity that these players are going to get um, and the way that these guys are going to play in FIBA as like a playoff environment? It's great, man. The idea that we can utilize this time for Shea and these other guys as a playoff environment in international play is, is truly spectacular. It, dude, the, um, um, the pool play and stuff like that, it, it's just like it would be considered like playing in a, um, you know, a game of series, you know, a, a five game series or four game series. So it, it, it's unique. I like it. And it, it's really cool that Wayne came up with it. So road dog says the 40 days of summer and the 13th of August. And they started today. Um, road dog knows about the dog days. That's for sure. Yes, man. The dog days. All right, man. So what else we got? What else we got today? We've got Thunder Hoops tonight, guys. We're looking forward to that going live for that game. So please join us for that. Um, we've got uh, definitely, I think we've got Chep starting, Kaysen starting. Mm. Um, we've got a back-to-back -back game. So I'm not. I'm assuming some of these guys that we would consider starting today aren't going to start and they're going to start tomorrow instead. I don't know if that's Trey Mann or what that, you know, what the combination is there, but I'm definitely going to be looking forward to this because we've got two situations where we're playing back to back games. We got today, tomorrow back to back, and then we got Friday in the first game, the uh, first round of the playoffs for Summer League. So um, we do have two situations of back to back games, which I know we don't like to play guys back to back if we don't need to. So we'll see how that whole rolls out i guess oh yeah there's very very small chance we play chet back to back now oh, yeah. i very small i could see us doing it simply because we don't think it's going to happen like every time we feel like we could predict the lineups or who's going to be playing it won't be they they throw us a curveball so every time. like it could happen but um did it surprise you they shut down victor no man not at all i mean i kind of I thought it would be a smart move to do well after I saw his knee like that, and then I watched another play that he went down hard and was slow getting up, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, man, he's done. Like that's, that's too many situations. And I'm telling you, like, if, if you think I'm the only one and, and there's a couple other people on Twitter that saw what I did, if we're the only, if you think we're the only ones that saw that, then you're delusional because the staff is designed to look over these plays and, and design, you know, what could they could have done better. And if they see something like that, they're tapping the coach and saying, you know, get him out. Like we can't play this game. Like we're not playing this game of hopefully he's not going to get injured in summer league. So you're like, saying they, they also would happen chat. Vic up to screen anybody. What's that? You're saying that they shouldn't send Victor for out. To not screen until people. he learns how to get his feet on. Dude, there was three times that I watched the screen with him and you can just see his legs flaring out and it's concerning. Like, I, I don't know if it's just the way that he comes into a screen or if it's a European play that you go wider, but 
with with a body like his and the spindly little legs like that, like you've got to start thinking like maybe we don't go and send them traditional screens. You know, like maybe maybe we do other types of screens to help him. Like like again, like people running into his legs like that. I, I man, I've torn my ACL twice, and the third time, I'm pretty sure I got a, a partial tear, if not a full tear, that I'm just not fucking around with. Right? Yeah. There's when you see someone's leg hyperextend in that um, direction, right? You, you, I mean, it just it makes you sick because like it's like, ooh, no, and 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 they're amongst NBA players, NBA staff that have all been part of that, dude. I again, I'm not the only one that saw that and just cringed, and then start looking back at some of the other screens. You're like, okay, this is an ongoing thing. You know, like this is this needs to be this needs to be tapered off. This needs to be trained. So, like, between Britney Spears and those screens, do you think that, like, them being so concerned about the physicality in Las Vegas is something that maybe, like, they're going to be surprised about the NBA? Um, first of all, I, the whole Britney Spears thing, like, I, I wish I wish so badly he didn't use those words of she grabbing. She grabbed me. She grabbed me, like, so badly. Like, if, if, if that hadn't been said, then these situations that we just watched in the Summer League where – some of his screens were set off and maybe like bumping and grinding and got him, you know, thrown to the ground. Like I would be like, okay, you know, but one of the things that I was concerned about that I saw in France was people were afraid to body him up. Like there was a couple situations that he got bodied up, but it was never on a consistent basis. And again, I, it was almost as if some people were afraid to injure him. And, they played him soft and that's what the NBA is not about. You know, like there's no playing somebody soft like this. Like there's one way you throw Kenny Lofton jr. On them, bro. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like go get him, Kenny and let Kenny just bruise him all game. I'm, I'm telling you game in and game out, you know, throw Draymond green at them. You throw this player at them game in and game out. You go even 70 games getting treated like a rag doll. It's going to change your opinion really quickly on what you want to do in the NBA. Wayne, I mean, like, go you think about these seven, two, seven, you know, three guys, seven, one guys, Dirk Levinsky. I mean, again, solid guys. You got Joker, solid guy. You know, we've gone through this with um, Bradley. Everybody's like, Bradley's going to dominate the NBA. Skinny, too skinny, you know? Sean Bradley. Sean Bradley with like seven, six or whatever he was. Like, We've seen this happen, guys. We've gone through this before. Like, is the NBA different? Is it allowing guys like um, Victor to dominate more? Yes. But then it's also going to bring out a price in guys that are incredibly physical out there. Incredibly physical. Then every team is going to have an incredibly physical guy to go against Chet and go against Victor. And and it, we talk about when you're playing a, a, a team in the playoffs, right? They have this mentality that, you know, you have one move. You have two moves. Take those first two moves away and see what that player can do, right? Well, the Victor, you know, like it's he's going to have to prove he can play a physical contact before they take that away. And how many years is that going to take in the NBA? I mean, these are not like again. I, I talked about the Morris brothers, like they were like some great gods as you know, god gods to the NBA. But the physicality that they bring, or anybody brings that's even a halfway decent role player that's a power forward center is going to really go right at Vic. I mean, great at him. Like it is designed to protect these players better than it has been in the past. But I'm telling you guys, it's going to take Victor doing some crazy things. And everybody's like, well, you know what? We're just done with that. We're going to shut that off. And now he has to go and play playoff mode, you know, 15 games into the season. Get to a second move. Well, they're going to take that away now. Right? I mean, because mm -hmm. who else is on that team to take away some of the, the scoring pressure? I mean, you got nobody. And that's where it goes back down to they have to have a shitty ass season this year and the shitty ass season the next year in order to get a team around Victor. Shut him down. So Vic, um, Wayne says um, Victor falls like a tree. Timber. <laughs> Like it's bumped around. He, that Wayne, that's a really good point of how you're uh, how he falls. Um, it's I it's 
the un- most ungraceful way I've seen a big person fall in a long time. It's kind of scary. Like those how wrists get broken or like kneecaps get bruised. I mean, like, ugh. like I hate it, man. I hate that it. I see this, and all I see is that sometimes. Like, damn, he almost got injured there. Damn, that almost was an injury. Like, I feel like I'm walking around behind my son Timmy on a hike, and every single like three seconds, I'm picking him up because he wasn't paying attention and kept on falling on the the trail. You know, like, yeah. like there's just some people like that. My, one of my best friends from high school, his name was Ian Cox. Like, Ian fell everywhere. Everywhere he went, he fell. Well, you know what happened to Ian? Ian fell 70-something feet off of the uh, OU stadium while he was helping it put together. He was incredibly clumsy, okay? Bad things happen sometimes to clumsy people. And it's not a knock on clumsy people. He's alive. Ian is kicking it. He survived an incredible fall. But my point is, is that sometimes really tall guys, and Ian was 6'7", I think, 6'8", and really tall guys are just really clumsy, even though they look sound and they look like they can handle a lot, but they can't. And that's what I'm wondering with Victor is how much can he take before it's too much? Grow dog mentioned Sean Bradley got hit by a car. So did Mark Eaton. Both of those guys yeah. were seven, four, seven, six. So if I were Victor, my number one, I read that story the other day, man, that, that story about Sean Bradley getting hit by a car, bro. That yeah. really fucking touched me. If you haven't read it, man, you need to like go back and read about it. Cause yeah, I read like, it. you know, that's both. just insane to me. I think Mark Eaton got by, hit by a car also right around the same time, like both of them riding on bikes and both of them in Salt Lake City. So that's my recommendation. If you're over seven foot, stay off of the bikes in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Um, also, Jack White, man. Jack White, dude. Yeah. So Jack White, we haven't seen him yet. I know somebody asked earlier, have we seen Jack White play? Um, we haven't, have we? So is he going to play this summer league, you think? There's... Some players, I really want White to play on this team, but there's some players that I am sitting here questioning which players are going to be on this team and which players aren't. And I keep looking back at the fact is, is that there's certain players that we haven't seen on the bench yet, man. And I don't know why that is. We have them signed, but they're not on our bench. Why is that? I I don't know. Because we saw Misich, Misich there. We've seen other players there. Have we seen him? I haven't seen him. Or Misich. What was that other player? The bearded player. He looked player. like Meritich, but like, I don't I think it was, was Misich. Him. I thought that was Misich. No. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, I, we've seen enough of our players there in the summer league in Vegas. You know, we've seen Shea in the stands. We've seen J-Dub. You know, maybe not Shea. I thought we saw Shea yesterday or two I days ago. Did we see- I'm not saying he wasn't there. I just didn't see him. Man. Maybe I'm just making shit up again. I bet these guys I, are working the other, out with the other podcast. I said that Dort was like hitting like 54 percent of his um, percent of his layups, oh, yeah. and I'm like way off. He's like hitting 45 percent of his layups, bro. Come on, I'm like. And then and then I'm they like called a, you out about 90 percenter, bro. The elbow three isn't exactly um, as high of a percentage as we want, but the corner three is a good. He likes shot. to take it though. <laughs> he loves taking it. when it goes in. It looks nice. Um, so here's a question, bro. Do you think like Wyatt is saying you can throw Dort on Victor and because of the leverage, he'll have somewhat of that Kenny Lofton effect or is that too much of a size give up there? No, I, I agree. Again, anybody that can take Victor and make him feel it in his legs is going to be put on Victor. I mean, this is this is trial and error in the NBA. It's, it's going to be rough for Victor for a very long time. <laughs> I mean, like every shape and size is going to be thrown at Victor. I mean, every single shape and size. They're going to find out what's the most effective way to guard Victor. And then if it's not effective, then the next team will try something else and the next so on and so forth. I see Josh Giddy playing Victor a lot. I see Chet playing Victor. I see, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they put Dort or even Shea or even J-Dub on Victor. Like the physical contact that he's going to be able to get from all of these guys is, is truly spectacular. And all these guys have seven, two wingspans. So like, why not? Like, throw them out there. See what they can do. And, and you know, there's so many guys that are on our team that keep saying, Mark, like, I wish they could stay. But when you have 21 guys, six have got to go. Which six are going, I don't know. But I do know that if you take the right six guys and you combine them, it's worth a shit ton. I mean, a lot. Where could these guys go? I don't know. But I think the Sam Presti is seriously thinking, like, if I put the right Roll players together and package them in a deal. I can walk away with two or three extra first round draft picks. I could walk away with 
blank player. I could walk away with blank assets. I could walk away and I wish I could tell, man. I just don't know. So what are the chances um, JRE doesn't make it and Garuba does make it? Listen, anything is possible at this moment. Anything is possible. What's up, Joseph? Joseph is saying Jack White was there at the game with um what? with Giddy. So that's that's pretty dope to fight. hear. I did I didn't see that. Um admittedly when I we're watching the games, we're hanging out together too. So we miss a lot of things. Yeah, if Jack White's there, that's what I want to see. I want to see anybody that's gonna be playing in this Thunder team. Riddles, the rubber band man. <laughs> the rubber band man. The amazing rubber band man. All right, I'll take it. That's Victor. Um, man, 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 man. Oh man, um, I dig it. Let's Wayne. do that. There we go. So, Wayne's talking about Victor risking his ankles, shoulders, collarbones, fractures, and arms with maybe his wrists, and he sticks his fingers in the wrong places too. That's what she said. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> um, Road Dog thinks maybe bye bye to Tai Tai. Well, listen, there's just going to be a lot of these guys. I, I'm going to say this, is that um, there's Tai Tai, there's Garuba, um, there's JRE, there's Trey Mann. Um, there's a number of these guys that if you're sitting down with the Oklahoma City Thunder staff, you're going to get different opinions of which players to keep and which ones not to. But here's the reality. Two of the, or two of the four guys I just mentioned have to go. Because if you look at it, the way that this structure is and having, we have like four other guys that are older players that we could get rid of without touching our young assets. But to me, it's just about, it's about who you value more. Do you value Ty Ty more than JRE or Ty Ty more than Trey man? I mean, these are decisions that I, I wish I can make, but I, I can't like it's so far beyond my, my pay scale. So Joseph's saying we get 15 plus three two ways. Yep, that's 18 total. All right. So but none of we can't go tie tie two way. He's a first round pick, guaranteed contract. You can't go Garuba two way, guaranteed contract, first round draft pick. So you can't switch those guys over. Obviously, Rudy Gay, um, veteran, not a two way contract. Um, you know, we could go down this list. Wayne got tickets for the boomers August 14th. Couldn't get courtside, but got six rows behind Australia's bench. Hell yeah, dude. That's sick, man. Dude, you got to come up with some uh, good things to yell towards uh, those uh, those those players, man. Get them to uh, look back at you. Maybe throw some, um, like, um, I don't know, cool Jock elbow. Traps. Well, <laughs> you took it there, man. I was going to say, like, like, wristbands or, like, elbow pads or whatever whatever players, but I mean, jock straps are something that I'm sure somebody would get use out of. <sighs> um, All right, Joseph, I'm over the Poku experience. You know what? Here's the thing. I'm not, and I, I want to explain to you why I'm not over the Poku experience is because I still think Poku can average two to two to three blocks a game with 15 minutes of play. Why that's important is because we're going to be playing against guys like Victor that Poku can go guard. We're going to be playing against guys like Eaton and some of these other bigger bodies. And having Who's somebody like Eaton? Poku, I mean, Eaton from the Jazz. I mean, he's a big he's body. Retired. Mark Not Eaton? Eaton. I, no, no, I'm talking uh, the the um, oh. seven four player that his name is Eaton. Auburn. No, 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 guy from Auburn. Ke Walker Kessler, that guy. No, no, no. This guy's Eaton. I can't even remember his name. His first name. Anyways, he was drafted, or he might have gone back to college. He played for Purdue. Oh, the Purdue guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went back to college. He didn't get drafted. He decided to go back. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, I thought he went. Okay, you're right. Anyways, so getting back to it, man. Like, I just I feel like we have to have a second Poku or a second big body out there. And Poku, for me, he's skinny, yes, but he's proven that he's not afraid to take the shot when he's open. He can play defense incredibly well. Uh, he fits really well next to um, uh, Chet, or he takes that five position, you know, pretty well. So put him at the four, put him at the shooting uh, small forward, 
it doesn't matter. Like he can play a lot of different positions on defense. So if he's not going to be a lot of money and we can keep him, then I th- I say we keep him. So Joseph had his um, blue you know, furry jacket. Just nice. being honest about Poku moment, and then we had a few <laughs> people jump in and say, "Hey, hold up, hold up." So Deep Light Gaming said he loves Poku. Corey, the only thing that that man can't block is my love for Poku. Um, so I dig it. Joseph says he's just got a weak basketball mentality, but I would say that his body is weak, but his mentality, I, I don't think is actually weak. I think the way he thinks the game, the way coach Degnault talked about him being a connector, um, the way that he defends the basket, he gets out and runs. I think he really thinks it right. I just think his body is, is having trouble handling it. Yeah. Can we get that up there? He's not the only, um, tall thin guy in the league so you know can we get 50 games out of him 60 games out of him without him getting hurt um like i know that there will be some you know turned ankles or you know whatever there's going to be some inflammation that he needs to take some rests on but like really 50 to 60 games without injury would be really big oh i 100 percent agree 100 percent agree with that that um statement there is our goal is definitely to get um 70 games out of every player I mean, think about that. That's 12 games they miss. Um, I feel like that's a perfect amount of time to rest for a lot of these guys to ensure that, you know, whether it's a back-to-back game that's, you know, after, you know, five games and six nights and, you know what I'm saying, and a back-to-back night, like, I want them to be able to take these games off and be okay. And that's why you have to have the next man up mentality with 15 players coming strong. You know, like, insert Kaysen instead of um, Shea. Insert you know, Kenny Hustle instead of a J-Dub and, and, and being able to continue, you know, complete this rotation in the way that they're going to go and allowing some of these players to, to rest and, and getting them off. What is it? If you get 12 games off, you get two games a month off, you know, that there's no way that's a, a, a bad situation or maybe like a game and a half when it, you know, evens out by the time that everything is done, but that's still worth it. You know, what's up, Jaden? What's up, Frank? Um, so Jaden oh. saying, um, I feel like Garuba is the keeper out of them for a big trade package for the other, especially Trey. He will thrive in a lead role on a different team. And what, when Jaden said that, it really just made me Robert. realize, like, I don't expect Jaden. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't expect Trey Man to start this year on the team. If if there is an idea out there that there's a big trade package potential for Trey Man, we're we're not going to take him into the season. I'm sorry to say it, I, I'm I'm probably wrong if but I just I, I wanna, feel that way. I want to say something about that man if you know I, I've heard a lot of like rumors coming out of Miami right if there was a situation that we were able to clear a lot of these old players off of our books right and um including Trey man in exchange for somebody like hero right and that was who we came off and and you know in exchange with was to get hero like like I, I I don't like Hero's game, but Hero, if he's in the right system, he gains a lot of value, a lot of value. And if we just have him in the right system for even three months, his value okay. triples. All right, I love Hero's game. So we we, I think overall you say you don't love it, but I, I think but listen, if, you if also... we shed it, if we shed the money that we have on the books for the old players, and we right. replaced it with Hero, and we're okay with making Hero so, like. What would Miami Basically need a tradable to get asset. To, to, to give up Hero? What? What would Miami need to get to give up Hero? Would this be a part well, of the Dame the, package? Thing, Miami, like, here's the thing, is that they want Damian Lillard, right? Okay. And the Blazers want an extra draft round pick, first round draft pick. So Hero's price is not going to be very high. And I think people are really shocked when I say stuff like this. Because if you look at the price of the players and the drafts um, uh, and the way that first round draft picks are being um, hoarded right now, like... Even Damian Lillard isn't going to be this shocking. I mean, it'll be a big trade, but it's not going to be the Paul George tri- type trade. Um, and you can look at Siakam the same exact way. When he gets traded, people will look back and be like, man, that's a really good deal on that trade. It's because the market isn't there. And, and if you're looking at these players and saying, oh, this player should go here, this play- I, I, it's hard. Like, it's hard for me to sit here and say that I want this player to stay on this team but if we have an opportunity to get this player to play this type of ball right here and this type of style, right, that Hero can bring to this game, then for me, it's like, well, you know, 
first round draft pick and Trey Mann or Hero? All right, so Trey Mann, JRE, say those two guys are included. Who would want those players, Miami or Portland? Portland, dude. Portland. Okay. Portland needs those type of players. Okay. Those those are added. Like, that would be equivalent to a, another uh, first-round pick in Portland's mind. So they would get two first-round picks for for that adding. I I don't want Hero to be on this team, but I could see how Sam Presti and the guys are sitting around saying, how do we clear some of these, you know, contracts off? You know, Rudy Gaze and some of these other guys. What's up, right? Tobias? And this is one of the ways you do so, is you trade out six, seven guys for one. That – or. I mean, honestly, you could do two trades where you do three, right? Or, yeah, or like, or you're sending players to Miami, and you're sending players. Like, I don't like. I, I want to say that Victor Oladipo will stay on this team, and Kenny Hustle will stay on this team, and some of these guys are going to stay on this team. But the reality is, sure. is that if we have an opportunity to get a player that is an All Star type shooter, it's going to be hard to say no to that. Or if we have a player opportunity to get a big man that's an All Star type big man. It's going to be hard. Whatever Sam wants to do, he, it's going to be hard to say no to that because we have the assets to be able to burn in that scenario. And I hate saying assets like our players are assets, but you know this is doggy doggy world here. And if you are added to a package that returns something that's ten times better than you are, I'm sorry. We've appreciated your service, and we want to make sure you're in a good spot. But we want to make sure we're in a better spot. Um, Wayne wants to know how long before they're using AI and coaching team strategies in real time. Well, I, I do think that that's something they're already doing is that really? they type in I, they type in the players that are playing on the court and the stats and what they're good at, and they already have all these these stuff. And then it, it, I think teams have these lineups that they start with that would be best for those. And the computer generates what they think would be best. And obviously, you know, coaches would tweak it or whatever, but I think the 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 – first interaction with the NBA and AI is, is how to um, utilize our certain players that we have on the bench versus their players. Matchups. That's interesting. That's it, All right. Um, yeah, that's right. Five thirty central six thirty Eastern the game tonight. Um, Road dog. I hope we keep trade too. I just, yeah, me too, man. I just wonder, you know, I'm wondering if, um, Guys like JRE and Trey are, you know, kids are, they were drafted three years ago now. Well, but that's my point is we got to resign some of these players. And when you can't right resign there. them because of money, like you've got to take a step back and say, okay, we've got to move on because that's why you have so many draft assets. <laughs> you know, like you keep the guys that fit. And if you don't fit in the two years that you've had an opportunity to, like we have these contracts, it's second round contracts, they're designed for what? two years and then a third year isn't guaranteed so that's my point is that this is the way it's designed you got two years you can stick it in there for two years you can pull it out for two years but the reality is unless you go out there and put balls to the wall you're not going to know what you can do and that's why you're seeing people like jay will take time away from jre and poku like he proved that he's more valuable as an asset at this point in his career which is crazy saying What's up, Moani? Um, in season tournament, you know, I tried to read about it, and I was incredibly bored. Um, I didn't find it very interesting to to read about. I saw the commissioner talking about it. Every time I see him talk, it just bores the shit out of me. Unless he's talking about jaw. So I just think of a penis talking whenever I see him talking, bro. Right. So I yeah, mean, just the tip. Some people find it entertaining. I don't. Um, so what do you guys think about the in season tournament? I think um, I think sometimes people try too hard to make things exciting. Um, in the end, I enjoy all 82 games of the Thunder season. I can see why some people don't. So, um, But for me, it's like you're not going to make it any more exciting with a stupid in-season tournament person. I disagree. Man, I agree, disagree so much. Here's the reason why. Is that, um, all right, mid-season is always getting blah, right? Like it's just going and going and going. Like I think we've missed. I've missed three games in the last uh, this you know four seasons. I think right, maybe four games. But the point is, is that it just goes and goes and goes. You add this type of excitement, 
right? And you throw this in as an experiment, dude, I'm telling you, it's going to be like on a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder where the, what, million dollars actually means a lot to the players on a young team. Like you're going to see these young players come out and show something because the extra money that's that's being, you know, gifted to these players that they win is a substantial amount of money. And these guys are going to need it. So, like, it's all about that, man. Like, and on top of that, if, you, if you're playing in the championship game, it only adds one game to your regular season. So, I don't, to me, that's like, a, you know, I like it. Well, not flavor. everybody in the chat likes it. They seem to be a little bit more on my side, but maybe, maybe it'll be <sighs> exciting. Look, every time, like, when, um, something new comes out, I'm like that guy that seems to always, kind of be like that's right robert uh, the grandpa like well what's the point of that i don't really see why we need to do that so i end up being that way so i I mean i'm probably wrong because a lot of these things that um commissioner silver has done has have turned out really fun and exciting sure so i mean i just think i think that um there's certain things that i would like to see in the nba change that's me Corey. um but I don't know. This in-season tournament has a lot of like possibilities to change Major League Baseball, change the NFL season, um, and adding something like this that means something to teams that are even like shitty ass teams that gives them more inspirations to win. Man, you know, like I can see a struggling Lakers team, right? Right. But think about this: the Oklahoma City Thunder were thumping during that time that the mid-season tournament would have gone on. They were kicking ass. Right, and some of the teams in the West weren't. Imagine the Oklahoma City Thunder as a young team, all of a sudden Unk. winning that tournament because they're just clicking at the right time. I mean, you can't tell me that that's not going to mean something to the players and to the right. team. And like Unk is saying, like first being a young team it might be the best thing that we go out and try to win the damn thing. Hell yeah, Samson dude! Thinks our group is extremely winnable. Yeah, you could. I mean, this is our chance to like put our balls on the table and say, fuck off, guys. We got a chance to win this. So, bam, let's do it. The last thing NBA needs to do is start mimicking soccer. That's a good point, Road Dog. Got a tip of my hat there. Um, Trey Man, this is from Wyatt, is definitely a dog. And um, with that being said, he seems to be doll, ball, too doll, uh, too doll too bomb ball. on it. <laughs> Two ball, ball dominant. dominant. Balls <laughs> on the dominant side. On the domination side. All right, but I, I definitely agree. Um, that's kind of why I'm like, maybe he, there's another team that would look at him and say like, hey, we would like to give him, you know, 18, 22 shots a game. I don't know hmm. which team, but maybe there is a team out there. All right, Riddles, Ugg, I want to say this. There's nothing too trippy about anything as i'm holding this t-shirt up so you guys can see 1943 albert hoffman guys nothing too trippy about what wayne was going to wear i have mad respect for a fuzzy blue jacket that wayne is talking about wearing so get it man yeah yeah I, i'm sure um giddy will remember it too i mean he he looked sharp in that that fuzzy blue jacket so um, yes dude Road Dog wants him to get rid of the worthless All Star game. Dude, I've been like for getting rid of that worthless All Star game for quite a while, um, but that's not going to happen. All right. So Wayne says, I like the idea of a championship league like soccer instead of the World Cup. Could be fun. I'm not too familiar with what's going on with soccer championship league. Um, It's a good idea. Championship league. I like that. Yeah. You're playing against. Yeah. Very Other cool. teams in the um the world, or well in Europe. <laughs> before we get out of here, let's take a second, real quick, to shout out to our supporters once again, and then we will see you guys at five thirty Central, six thirty Eastern for the game. Mark Howitt, Ryan Sheffield, El Sombra, Nina by Nature, Unk, John Flat, Blake, K Bizzle, Smitsta, Cameron Peters, Wayne, what's up? Bluegill, Golden Soldier, Ben Mack, and obviously our newest Calium. Um, ben and Calum joined us yesterday, and we appreciate it. Um, yeah, dude. This is just something that we're trying to do fun, and we're trying to Paul, the worldwide Thunder family. I mean, much can't get more amazing than that, right there, man. We're trying to um, increase the perks right now. It's just we're gonna give you guys shout out, shout out to get those little stars and all that stuff. But 
Um, we're bringing the call-in show. We're bringing the merch store. We're bringing the discounts. We're bringing all the fun. So um, shit, we're going to keep upping up our game. Uh, we keep inching closer to 1,000 followers, and we couldn't do that without all of you guys. So thank you for, for continuing to watch us and telling your friends and, and just being here because it means the world to us. All right, guys. See you tonight.